Welcome back, and you know, glad you all can come back to hear the word, not only hear the word, but be doers of the word, hallelujah. Father God woke, woke you up this morning, I hope you gave him honor, you gave him praise, and you gave him glory, because you didn't wake up on your own. I love you all with the love of the Lord, and Father God loves you more, and welcome back, I hope you all had a beautiful, blessed weekend, you know. It is a glorious day that the Lord has made, hallelujah, we are truly blessed, count your blessings. With that being said, let us go right into prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you this morning to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Father Yah, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who is our hope, our Lord and Savior. We say thank you. We're so very grateful and thankful for who you are to us, for us, and in us. And we're grateful for any and everything that you do, have done, and will do. And we cry out, Abba, Father. We love you with every being of us. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we love our neighbor, yes, as we love ourselves. And Lord God, help us to be obedient to your word. We thank you, Father God, that you woke us up this morning to another glorious day that you made. We are to rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And for many of us today, a lot of people are weary. Don't be weary in well-doing. Let us stand upright. At all times, be in reflection of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Help us to do that, Father. Help us to guide our eyes, heart, mind, and soul at all times. Because evil is waiting to pounce, even at the door. But we're not going to let him in. No, we want nothing to do with the evil one or anything connected to him. We serve a mighty God. A holy, pure, righteous God. Faithful and true is your name. Holy, holy, holy is thy God. Be ye holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord. Let us all be content where we went, where we are. Let us wait upon the Lord, because those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Let us all stand upright, be in reflection of the Most High God, in everything we say and what we do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father God, help us along the way. Father God, we thank you that you are the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you, Father God, that our lives are ordered by your steps, Lord God, your word. We thank you, Father God, that you are our protector, our provider. You are all and everything that we need, Lord God. You know what we have need of, even when we don't understand or we don't know. You know what we have need of before we even ask. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us and taking care of us and protecting us, guiding us, guiding us to all truth, teaching us how to love, love, not only love, how to forgive, not only how to forgive, how to forget. We thank you, Father God, for sending your only begotten Son to set an example for us, to teach us how to live Christ's life, to strive for holiness and holiness only, and to live a life of righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil, for thou art with us. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. Thou prepares the table before us in the presence of thine enemies. Thou anoint our head with oil, thy cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father God, we repent for all our wrongdoing, past, present, and future transgressions. We've crucified our flesh, and we don't live a life of sin, but we all have fallen short of the glory. Not one is good, not one but God. Please forgive us where we fall short, my Father, and as every generation, past, present, and future. Glory be to God. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, if we unknowingly open any doorways or entryways of evil, they are now closed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any evil curse, evil generational curse, evil covenant, witchcraft, spells, voodoo, any and every form of witchcraft, any and every form of sorcery, they're all broken. They're all broken right here, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We overtake them all, bind them, and cast them down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we know, Father God, that you are in charge. And... We proclaim Jesus Christ and he alone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. We pray, amen and hallelujah. And when I'm praying to the Lord thy God, I am praying to Father Yah. I am praying to Lord Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, none other. Glory be to God. The Jesus died for our sins. I am praying and living for Jesus. That's right. Jesus Christ, who's our Lord and Savior. Glory be to God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for your outstretched arms. We thank you, Father God, that you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. You are the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to salvation except through the Son to the Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, please help us guide our eyes, heart, mind, soul at all times. And um, may everything that we do, let every word that come out of our mouth be a reflection of you, Father. Let every word that come out of our mouth be a blessing and not a curse. And everything that we do, Lord God, everything that we do and what we say, let our light so shine before men that it show our good works. And that seen and unseen. And glorify our Father which art in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we know you pour out your spirit upon all flesh. So let us all open our mouths and be bold as lions and preach the gospel in season and out. Hallelujah. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. And we believe in and receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please open your mouth. Whatever Father God's given you, tell somebody. You may save a soul. Even pull it out of the pits of hell. Not only that, you want to get that blood off your hands. Don't be ashamed of the Lord. If you're ashamed of the Lord today, he'll be ashamed of you on judgment day in front of his Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we plead the blood of Jesus over all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, all our family members, lovers, and friends. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask may you please place a head of protection. Not only a head of protection, a firewall of protection around all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, all our family members, lovers, and friends. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask may you please bless all the listeners, bless those in the body of Christ, all our family members, lovers, and friends. Only you know we have need of, Father God, is your will, your way, hallelujah. And we know no weapons formed against you, no weapons formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray, hallelujah. I hear you trying to keep on messing with my mind and thwart my words. <laughs> Get thee behind me, Satan, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want nothing to do with you. I proclaim Jesus Christ. I confess Jesus Christ. And he alone. He is my Lord and Savior. It's for God I live and for God I'll die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and none other. Glory be to God. And we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I am an overcomer. I am strengthened through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I'm a child of the Most High God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know to whom I belong. And I know who I am. And nothing can change that. And nothing can come against me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My father fights my battles. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we can't say thank you enough. We're so very grateful and thankful to you. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for all to come to the truth today. That they give their life to you today before it's too late. And if they're giving their life to you and they're falling away for whatever reason it may be. May they repent and turn from their wicked ways and receive you into their life to be their Lord and Savior today. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, and we wish, as you wish, Father God, for none to perish. So we ask that you reach out to any and all enemies necessary, Father God, pull them to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And that includes the lukewarm Christians, the backsliders, those that aren't even with their mouth and their heart is falling away, and the lost souls as well. Please reach them, Lord God. If anybody to reach them, it's you, Father. You are God that changed not. Same God yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, we can't say thank you enough. We're so very grateful and thankful to you. We're grateful for you. We're grateful for who you are to us, for us, and in us. We're grateful for any and everything that you do, have done, and will do. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. God bless you, Father God. We praise thy holy name. You're worthy to be praised each and every day, all day. We glorify thy holy name. To God be all the honor, praise, and glory. We love you with every being of us. It belongs to you and only you. We say use us for your glory and your glory alone. Everything I do is for your glory and your glory alone, my Father. And you are greatly to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Your name is to be hallowed each and every day, all day, throughout the day. And we love you, Father God, because you first loved us. And we love you with an everlasting love and will never forsake thee. As in the holy, precious, and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we seal this prayer to you, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, with an holy kiss. And 
And Father God, we thank you for your holy angels that watch over us day and night, each and every day, even while we work and play and while we are rest. Thank you for the gift of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lion, for the remission of our sins paid in full. But we know we need to work out our own salvation and be in turn on the Most High. And we must study to show life self approved. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, also known as the Comforter, that guides us to all truth. And we say this prayer to you, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, within holy kiss. And it's in the holy, precious, mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us not stop there. You have the opportunity. If you haven't given your life to Christ, you have the opportunity to do so right here, right now. Please do so. If, you, if you're ready to receive Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior, then you may say this prayer. But if you're not sincere and you're not going to seek him in sincerity and truth, don't bother. But if you're ready to receive him, then please say this prayer. Hallelujah. I pray to you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I am sorry. And please forgive me for my sins against your word. I believe you are the only begotten Son of God and you died for our sins according to scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I am saved and have a chance at everlasting life. Help me to study your word and obey it and repent daily. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Congratulations, my new brother and sister in the body of Christ. Now, please repent for your sins. That means you're going to turn from your wicked ways. You're going to strive for holiness and holiness only, and you're not to sin on purpose. And you ought to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations, and God bless you in your walk with Christ. And remember this. It is not a religion. It's a personal relationship between you and the Lord thy God for commitment and love. We in the body of Christ, we welcome you. Welcome my new brother and sister to the body of Christ. May we, brothers and sisters of the body of Christ, may we edify one another, pray with and pray for one another, pray without ceasing, fast, bear one another's burdens, give love and charity, because they cover a multitude of sin. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Again, congratulations, my new brothers and sisters to the body of, brothers and sisters to the body of Christ. We love you, and Father God loves you more. God bless you. We're going to go right into scriptures, and today, Father God has given me uh, Mark chapters 2 through 4, and we shall read them. Hallelujah. Mark, or the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 2. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they, lie, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy, sin, they, thy sins be forgiven thee. Excuse me. Thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? 
Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in the spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast, and they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. And a Pharisee said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he had need and was in hunger, he and they that were with him? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest, and did eat the shoe bread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Chapter 3 And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand, and they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. But when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved with, for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth, and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and from beyond Jordan, and they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had plagues. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him, and he ordained twelve, that they should be with him, 
and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. And Simon he surnamed Peter and James the son of Zebedee and John the brother of James and he surnamed them Boanerges which is the sons of thunder and, and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot which also betrayed him and they went into an house and the multitude coming together again so that they could not so much as eat bread and when his friends heard of it they went out to lay hold on them for they said he is beside himself and the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said he had deals above and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables how can Satan cast out Satan and if a kingdom be divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand and if a house be divided against itself that house cannot stand and if Satan rise up against himself and be divided he cannot stand but hath an end no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house verily i say unto you all sin shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemes wherewith soever they shall blaspheme but he that shall blaspheme against the holy ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation because they said he hath an unclean spirit. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And a multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. Chapter 4. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, they went out the sower to sow, and it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up, and some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables that seeing they may see, and not perceive, and hearing they may hear, and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sin should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The soul soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, <clears throat> and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown unto, among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel, or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? 
For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. When the, but when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up, and becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And with many such parables spake he to the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, on our regular reading, today we start the book of Job, and we'll be on chapter 1 on the book of Job. Job and his family. Job chapter 1. Job and his family. Many years ago, a man named Job lived in the land of Uz. He was a truly good person who respected God and refused to do evil. Job had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 pair of oxen, 500 donkeys, and a large number of servants. He was the richest person in the east. Job's sons took turns having feasts in their homes, and they always invited their three sisters to join in the eating and drinking. After each feast, Job would send for his children and perform a ceremony as a way of asking God to forgive them of any wrongs they may have done. He would get up early the next morning and offer a sacrifice for each of them, just in case they had sinned or silently cursed God. One day, when the angels had gathered around the Lord and Satan was there with them, the Lord asked, Satan, where have you been? Satan replied, I have been going all over the earth. Then the Lord asked, What do you think of my servant Job? No one on earth is like him. He is truly good. He is truly a good person who respects me and refuses to do evil. Why shouldn't he respect you? Satan remarked. You are like a wall protecting not only him, but his entire family and all his property. You make him successful in whatever he does, and his flocks and herds are everywhere. Try taking away everything he owns, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord replied, All right, Satan. Do what you want with, any, with anything that belongs to him, but don't harm Job. Then Satan left. Job's sons and daughters were having a feast in the home of his eldest of his oldest son. When someone rushed up to Job and said, While your servants were plowing with your oxen and your donkeys were nearby eating grass, a gang of Sabians attacked and stole the oxen and donkeys. Your other servants were killed, and I was the only one who escaped to tell you. That servant was still speaking when a second one came running up and saying, God sent down a fire that killed your sheep and your servants. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. 
Before that servant finished speaking, a third one raced up and said, Three gangs of Chaldeans attacked and, attacked and stole your camels. All of your other servants were killed, and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. That servant was still speaking when a fourth one dashed up and said, Your children were having a feast and drinking wine at the home of your oldest son, when suddenly a windstorm from the desert blew the house down, crushing all of your children. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. When, Jer when Job heard this, he tore his clothes and shaved his head because of his great sorrow. He knelt on the ground, then worshipped God and said, We bring nothing at birth. We take nothing with us at death. The Lord alone gives and takes. Praise the name of the Lord. In spite of everything, Job did not sin or accuse God of doing wrong. Amen. Well, God's will in chapter 2 tomorrow will be on chapter 2. Still on the book of Job. Job loses his health. Wow. He lost everything in one day. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised today. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Please tell your loved ones that you love them. And tell them about Father God, who is Jesus Christ in the flesh. Don't only tell your loved ones, tell everybody about Father God, who is Jesus Christ in the flesh. Father God is a Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit came down that begotten body. That same Holy Spirit dwells within you and I if we seek Him in sincerity and truth with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. You should hear from Him. And don't have aught with anyone. You mustn't have problems with anyone. Whatever somebody does to you, you must forgive them. I don't care who he or she is or what he or she have done. You must forgive them. As you wish for your Father in Heaven to forgive you for your sins and your transgressions, you must forgive your fellow man. Amen? <coughs> Excuse me. I love you all. That's why I tell you the truth. And Father God loves you more, of course. Hallelujah. About the Bible, I'm going to thank you, Holy Spirit. Each and every one of us, and that includes myself, please read your Bible daily and go down on your knees in prayer and cry out to the Father. Don't let somebody tell you what it says. Read it for yourself. And Father will teach you. He will let you understand what it says, what it means. He will give you the interpretation. He teaches each and every one of us. If we go to him in sincerity and truth and ask, he will surely answer. He will teach you. And if you need change, he will change you as well. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And he that has begun a good work will not stop until the day of Christ coming. Glory be to God. And I am always, um, he's always working on me. Because I know, I know I'm flaw. I'm full of flaw. God is flawless. Okay, but we're not. Glory be to God. And I love, and Father God, we can't say thank you enough. We're so very grateful and thankful. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day from youngest to oldest alike. And we love you and Father God loves you more. God bless you. Bye-bye.